Hello, Palisades family. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible speaks in a number of places of the meaning and magnificence of God's creation. Here are a few. The first verse of Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hand. And in Psalm 8, 3 and 4, in the New Living Translation, we read, When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in place, what are mortals that you should think of us, mere humans that you should care for us? Turning to the New Testament, in Romans 1:20 we find these words that not only tell us of the revelation of God in creation, but also that by looking at that, we should know God. From the time the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky and all that God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature so they have no excuse whatsoever for not knowing God. Have you ever been in a place where the majesty of creation caused you to be filled with praise at the wonder of God's handiwork? I've experienced it many times, but three specifically stand out in my memory. When I was youth director in Northern California, I took our youth group on a ski retreat in the Sierras. After our meeting time one evening, I went outside by myself. The winter snow looked like it had been sprinkled with glitter in the moonlight. God's artwork was magnificent. Another time at Forest Home, a retreat center in the San Gabriel Mountains, there had been a thunderstorm that afternoon and early evening, which cleaned the air and made the pine trees even more aromatic than usual. It was 2.30 in the morning when I stepped outside my cabin and was awed by the brilliant array of stars on a moonless night. Before I went to sleep, I had most of a three stanza song written on paper. More recently, sitting at the foot of Nevada Falls in Yosemite, I was awed by the thundering power of the falls and the glory of that very special place. The thought entered my mind, if heaven is greater and more beautiful than anything on earth, and I believe it is, then wow, just wow. It was a similar experience that led to the writing of our hymn for this week. I'm sure you'll recognize it. It was originally written by a Swedish pastor, the Reverend Carl Gustav Boberg, in 1886. He was one of the leading evangelical pastors of his day, the editor of a weekly Christian magazine, Witness for Truth, and he also served for 15 years in the Swedish parliament. 
One time when Pastor Boberg was visiting a beautiful country estate in the southeast of Sweden, he was caught in a sudden thunderstorm. The violent lightning and thunder quickly ended, leaving clear and brilliant sunshine, and he heard the sweet songs of the birds in the trees. Pastor Boberg's response was one of awe and adoration of Almighty God as he fell to his knees in worship and praise. His other response was to write a hymn of nine stanzas, beginning with the Swedish words, O store gut, ner jag den felt beskeder. The hymn took an interesting route to us today. From its Swedish origins, the text was translated into German in 1907 as Wie groß bist du, how great are you. In 1912, Ivan Stepanovich Prokhanov, known as the modern Martin Luther of Russia, came upon a German version and translated it into Russian. In 1933, the Reverend Stuart K. Hine and his wife, who were British missionaries, learned the Russian translation from a congregation they were serving in Ukraine. They noticed what an effect the hymn had on both believers and unbelievers. As with Boberg, it was a while later while they were traveling in the Carpathian Mountains that the grandeur of the scenery brought forth the first two verses in English. As the Hinds continued their evangelistic work in the Carpathian mountain villages, verse 3 came into being. When war broke out in 1939, it was necessary for the Hinds to return to Britain, where they continued their evangelistic work. And it was there, after World War II, that verse 4 was written. The tune for the hymn is an arrangement of an old Swedish folk tune. The complete hymn as we know it was first published in England in 1949. George Beverly Shea, for many years soloist for Billy Graham Crusades, brings the rest of the story to completion and it's how you and I probably got to know this hymn. Shea writes, during the London Crusade at Herringay Arena in 1954, my friend and publisher, Andrew Gray, handed me a little leaflet containing what he called a new hymn. Well, we received many contributions of this kind, and at first I did not examine it very closely. A few weeks later, I learned that this new hymn was the final result of almost 70 years of literary activity involving several different writers and translators. Mr. Shea goes on. We first sang How Great Thou Art in the Toronto, Canada Crusade in 1955. Soon after, we used it on the Hour of Decision radio program and in many American crusades. During the New York meetings of 1957, the choir joined me in singing it 99 times. It became the keynote of praise of each evening. Well, let's look at the wonderful words of this hymn. The first two stanzas were inspired by the original words of Pastor Boberg, as I said. I encourage you to picture what he saw, what he felt, and let it be what we see and feel. Each stanza ending with a response of praise. How great thou art. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. 
How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art. You see, the hymn is, is like a prayer and an ascription of praise to God. Stanza three moves from considering the wonder of creation to being filled with reverence and astonishment at God's grace to us and the substitutionary atonement. <clears throat> and when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. This is the heart of the gospel, isn't it? And it's what Peter wrote in 1 Peter 2.24. Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. As I mentioned before, Mr. Hine wrote the final verse just after World War II, at a time when many refugees from Eastern Europe were streaming into England. Although they had found greater safety and freedom in their adopted land, the question was always, when are we going home? Verse 4 explains that it is only when we reach our heavenly home that we will fully comprehend the greatness of our God. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 talks about that amazing day. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy will fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious hymn that reminds us of the majesty of your creation, the wonder of the atonement that we receive through Christ and his death on the cross. We thank you too that we can look forward to that day when you will take us home and we know that will be a joyful day, a day when we will proclaim in person, my God, how great thou art. In the meantime, Lord, help us to celebrate that and proclaim that every day and in every way. We pray it in the strong name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Do have a wonderful week. See you next time.